This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. Guys, this incredible wallet, it's light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge out of your back pocket. It seriously changed my whole pocket game. If you've moved on from the flip phone, don't you think it's time to let that 90s style wallet that your dad still uses behind? Ridge Wallets, hold up to 12 cards, plus all the cash that you need. You can choose from over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It is the best wallet you can buy, and you don't just have to take my word for it because there's over 30,000 five-star reviews. I'll tell you, I was skeptical at first, but once I tried it, I never went back, and neither will you. Guess what, guys? There's no pressure. Try it out for 45 days. If you don't love it, send it back. Get a full refund. When you decide to keep it, there's a lifetime warranty. Click the link in the description to get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns. Go to ridge.com slash chael. That's ridge.com slash chael and use the promo code chael. Am I mad at Henry Cejudo? Should I be mad at Henry Cejudo? You know what? Before you can answer that question, I suppose I need to tell you a little bit of backstory on this. So, my friend and neighbor, Rick Bell, minding his own business, he's on a work trip, and somewhere on this trip, he intersects Cejudo in an airport. Now, Rick is a wrestling coach. He's a wrestling fan. He's the father of a champion and now professional wrestler. Got a Division I scholarship. Going to represent the Beavers of Oregon State. So Rick knows who Henry is. Fight fan, all these everything. He goes up to Henry. He's very nice to Henry. And Henry is very nice back and tells Rick that he's going to do Mike Tyson's podcast. Rick, who's my neighbor and friend, says, oh, you should get Chael on that podcast. And Henry says, oh, no, I couldn't do that. Mike doesn't like Chael. Now, that is news to me. I did not know that. Mike Tyson is terrified of me, and he has been nothing but sweet. And you guys have never heard me ever say anything bad about Mike Tyson as it would pertain to Mike and I getting together. I would never put him in that spot. And I appreciate, quite frankly, how sweet he is to me. I get it. I've been scared of guys before. What I don't know that I like is that Henry appears to have taken Mike's side. Where would that come from? Why would Henry possibly take Mike's side? I haven't shared my end of this, and I know a little bit more to this than I'm letting on, but I've never shared it with Henry, and I go back with Henry, not to mention I'm a wrestler. What's he know about Mike Tyson? That what They went and did some reefer together? Or Mike had him on a podcast that nobody watches? I, I, I don't understand. Should I be upset with Henry? Because if, you're, if, if, if I know Henry, who I thought was my friend, and he's going out to talk to some pothead named Mike Tyson just out of nostalgia reasons, right? I mean, there's a reason people go to museums and they look at dinosaur bones too. I don't begrudge him for this. This could be an interesting thing to do. But if Tyson's got heat with me and Henry knows it and Henry's my guy, then Henry should have gone in and tried to smooth this in, in some level, I think. I think. I'm not sure. I think. I think I'm mad at Henry. Not con I'm, not, I'm not committed to the idea that I am, but I might be. And I'll tell you where this happened. I had made very good comparisons of Mike Tyson to Anderson Silva once upon a time, way back when Silva and I had our beef. Because they were saying that Silva was the greatest fighter of all time. And I was informing the announcer, right, the interviewer who asked me this, that that's the same stuff they said about Mike Tyson. But Anderson has beaten 12 guys. That was a big number back then. Everywhere I went, I had to hear about tw these 12 guys. First off, 12 is not a big number at anything. I don't give a damn if you've been to the moon 12 times. You ain't been to the moon that many times, okay? Just to start with, 12 is not a big number. But secondly, and moreover, the guys that Anderson beat were not even with the company anymore. They had been released. So how much credit do you get if you beat a guy who wasn't good enough to hold his spot in the company? And this is what I was using. These aren't put-downs to Anderson. This is how I was lifting myself up. I mean, this is how I was mentally getting ready to go into an extremely difficult contest. I've got the right to do that. But I had made the example to Mike Tyson, who they told us was the world champion, and the history books will tell you he was the world champion, and there wasn't a day on his life that he was ever the best in the world. Now, I have proof of that because there was a guy named Evander Holyfield there the whole time who Mike would not fight. 
And before you think that was a different era, Holyfield's two years older. So it wasn't a different era. It was the dirty filthiness of boxing kept the right guy from getting an opportunity against the chosen guy. That's not to say that Mike wasn't good. I wasn't putting him down. But he did not make Olympic teams. He wasn't the best amateur ever in the world. And he damn sure wasn't the best pro ever. At least not when he vanders here. And this is how stories can get told in the fight business. It's the only comparison I ever made. I had never met Mike. And I didn't begrudge him. And I've watched all of his fights. And I would pay him some very big compliments. I'm surprised he didn't make the Olympic team. I'm surprised that he got kept off that. I was happy when he made the junior team in 85. Followed his career very closely. I think he's ferocious. Love to watch his training videos. I have a lot of really big compliments. It wasn't Mike's fault. We've done that in MMA too, where somebody's in the right place at the right time. And if you can keep enough eyes, right, enough people looking at this hand so they don't look at this hand that happens to be named Evander Holyfield or happens to be named Holly Holm or happens to be named Amanda Nunes, the other people that are held back in our sport so the chosen one can go to the top. It's one of those things. I don't begrudge it. I get it. But I explained it. And I was the first to explain it. So I ended up meeting Mike. This is where I find out. This is where I find out how he looks at me. And I appreciate that. Could it have been a nicer guy? The end. I don't have any more with Mike. That's it. That was in 2014. Fast forward to about a year ago. A picture comes out of juiced out of his mind, Mike Tyson, on the internet, released by Mike's people. I sit over here and I do a video on it. And I said, Mike's juiced out of his mind, which he was. His people reach out to me through Cejudo. I heard from Henry on this. His people had photoshopped Mike's head on a juice freak's body. So then they were mad at me for calling, well, Mike's not on steroids. That absolutely is not true. And I go, I'm looking at this body and I can tell you about the nipples. I can tell you about the delts and I can tell you about the upper abs. That's steroids. They go, yeah, but that's not Mike. We took the picture and we put it on. I go, okay, fair enough. I want to dispute that. And when I saw Mike weigh in, I realized it was exactly what happened. But his own team put it out. How does Mike get to be mad at me? And how does Henry get to be mad at me on Mike's behalf to the point that Henry's the one forwarding me the message from Mike's team? Mike's team's the one that put his head. Very good Photoshop. I didn't know it was Photoshop. Used the right tattoos. Used the everything. Took a juice head's body. I commented on, I don't know, do I, do I have to be wrong there? I mean, it sounds like I'm not right. It sounds like I'm not right, but am I wrong? They're the ones that put it out. I didn't go and Photoshop this and put it out to embarrass Mike. I spoke to a photo that his team put out, which they then later admit wasn't Mike's body. I, mean, I don't, I feel like I don't have any, I feel like I don't have any heat with Mike and I don't want Mike to feel like I do, right? I mean, it, it is one of those things. Like, like, as a relic in the sport, it's one of those things. I don't want him to be intimidated when I come around, right? And Mike's always been respectful of MMA guys, always. Man, he says beautiful things about MMA guys. That dates all the way back to Ken Shamrock. Ken had called Mike out, but for an MMA fight, man, Mike couldn't have been a cooler guy. He didn't pretend anything. He said, I'm a boxing guy. I don't want Mike to feel that way. But that's separate than what I'm talking about. Henry should have ridden with me.